Okay, we're in section 35 now. Let me click on that. And we're going to talk about the net change of an integral um, of rate. What does that mean? Rate's going to be an integral of a derivative. We've sort of done this before. But again, a lot of times language can make us very confusing. We'll certainly go through it in detail. All right. So it's going to be a short lecture. We'll talk about the theorem. And then we'll do we'll go through an example. And then we'll come back and we'll do more examples. And to drum this point across, of course, after we do more examples, at some point you want to say to yourself, well, can I try? And yeah, you can try. What we try to do, you study the material that was presented to you and then go on and do the homework. That's what we want you to do. So I'm going to go to the whiteboard and we're going to start the lecture in section 35. So let me do that. Just give me a second to do that. And let's start. I'm going to start at the beginning, of course. And I got to plug in my iPad. It's running low on power. Just give me a moment to do that. And we'll talk about it. All right. So we'll talk about, you know, what you've done in the past and what you're going to do now. All right. This really dates back to Math 119 and probably Math 100 as well. And it's going to be this net change thing. So the net change of the function f of t over the interval between t1 and t2. Well, in Math 119, what your teachers did was they wrote the net change was delta f. And what was delta f? Delta f was the change in f over an interval. And this interval is going to be upper f of t2 minus f of t1. Nothing new there. You know, what else did you do in Math 119? Well, you did the net change, <coughs> but you also did average change. And average change would have been the delta f, in this case, over the delta t, all right? So I would claim really not new. It's something you've been doing for a while. Then of course, they, they do this business over here. And I wanna tell you what they have written down over here. They just have delta f written down over here, all right? So what I wanna point out is, you know, it, it's really not new information but they're giving it to me as if it were new. And let me just outline this for you. They're giving me this and we'll discuss it. What do I know about this guy over here? I know F, I'm seeing this F over here, whatever that function is, right? How do I check it? It's not the derivative, I differentiate it and make sure it gives me back the integrand. So that's what we're saying. So if you took F prime and got back the integrand, you'd be okay. This is delta F. What am I doing evaluated from the integral? from T1 to T2, and I got it by delta F. What it's gonna give you, as they stated, FT2 minus FT1. All right, we're gonna take a look at an example now. And again, you may look at this and say, I don't see the connection between this and what you're asking me to do. Well, I just wanna understand what they're giving me. Right, I wanna understand what they're giving me. They say a population of insects increases at a rate. Well, the population's increasing at a rate. So I would say they're giving me a derivative. The change in the population with respect to time is 190 plus 6t plus 0.9t squared, all right? So, I mean, you know, I'll, I'll read it lit more, but I wanna say, you know, I'm saying, I think I've done something like this in the past and I would say, oh, this is an antiderivative problem where pt would be its antiderivative. Let's write that down. What do you get? 190 t plus, by the way, this is in the rate of this thing is insects per day. Population will be in insects, by the way, as a function of time. Then you're going to get 6t squared over 2, which is 3t squared. And then what do you get? You're going to get plus t cubed. Well, you know, 3 goes into 0 0.9, 0 0.3 times. And then you're going to get a constant of integration. I'm going to do something a little different. You could still use C if you like, but I'm going to say P naught. Now, I want to tell you what P naught means to me. It means the population at time zero. Let's write this down. If T is zero, what would I get? Zero plus zero plus zero plus P naught. This is population at the beginning of time. I'm going to say at the beginning of time for this population is zero. So I'm going to say if I read that, where they tell me P zero is, they actually tell me that P zero is, what is it? 50, write this over here. So let's write this down. P of T is a function 190 
t plus 3t squared plus 0.3t cubed plus 50. All right, I know that. By the way, I'm not saying that was your question. I'm just saying I relate back to what I know. Now, what do they want to know? They give me a population sex, increase the rate of 190 plus 60 plus 0.9t squared in sex per day. I did find out what P of T was as a function, antiderivatives. It says find the insect population after three days. So really what they want to find out is they want to find out what P of three is. Well, I'm going to write that as an integral. And there's many ways to do it, all right? So you can write that as an integral, or you could just simply use this function. We're going to do it both ways, by the way. So let's write this down. So what's P of three? Let's write this down. 190 times three plus three times three squared plus, I'm gonna write this a little differently. I'm gonna write as three tenths. Three is bad, I don't, I don't like using the decimal. We'll, we'll talk about that later though. And then what I get, I get three cubed plus 50. And this is the population at three, which means three days. What's this number over here gonna be? The number of insects. Let's write this down. 190 times three is gonna be 570. Again, three times 100 is 300. Three times 90 is 270. 300, 270 is 570. Three times nine is 27. Did I uh, write down everything? Yeah, I think so. Plus, well, three times three cubed is 81 tenths. Plus 50. I gotta do some adding. I'm going to do the whole numbers. So let's see, 570, 597, five, 647. 81 tenths, I'm going to get a decimal now, 8.1. But to refit, it can't be 0.1 insects. So I have to round this off. I'm going to round it off, 847 plus 8, which is 655 insects. All right, let's go back over here. Let's see if we got the answer. Well, they put down 655.1. That's true, but I, I don't think we should write down 655.1. So another way to do this is just, you know, basically set the integral up. Well, I just did it by doing antiderivative. So really the same thing, but you could have done the antiderivative, all right? You could have done that with the integration symbol. That's done over here, by the way. Same thing, really. All right. Same stuff. All right. So I'm going to say there's a cutoff here. This is the lecture or the intro. Then what we're going to do is we're going to try to repeat it using the examples now. Thank you.